Thank you that your name is exalted above all the earth, above every kingdom, above every nation, above every living things. Your name is even exalted above the dead, exalted above hell, above all things. That was, that is, and that is to come. We exalt your holy name, Lord Jesus. Hmm. For he has received the name that is above all other names. The only name in which man can call and be saved. Mm. Mm. The true name of the Lord that is given unto man in which name every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is indeed Lord 
Hallelujah. We exalt your name above all the earth, above the sea, in all the heavens. Exalt the name. Exalt the name. Somebody exalt the name of God. Exalt, exalt, exalt. Father, we bless your name, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you for all that you have already done. And we honor you for this very time. We honor you, Lord God, for leading us. We honor you, Lord Jesus Christ, for teaching us for instructing us we thank you lord god that you show us your way your path in all that you do we asking you lord god that you will lead this very moment we asking that you will lead this very moment lord god for your children are seeking lord god to be set free to be set free from every oppression lord god from every possession lord god from every demands of the enemy, Lord God, from the devil, Lord God, from every guilt, from every shackle, from every chain, chains of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, Lord, we come before thee, Lord God, asking for your grace, for your presence, for your manifestation, Lord God. So today, Lord God, I be the day that it will be counted as the day of deliverance. Today will be the day that will be counted, Lord God, as the first day of the first week of the first month of the first year or the new year of deliverance in the life of your children in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For long, Lord God, your children have sought, Lord God, how and where to get delivered. But Lord, today I believe in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thou shalt do thy work as you have always done. Thou shalt cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thou shalt set free, Lord God. Thou shalt heal the brokenhearted Lord God, thou shalt proclaim the name of God above all things in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray that any unclean spirit in the name of Jesus pack up and go, and that the power of God be revealed in the heart and lives of men and women in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord God, every spiritual possession. Every spiritual possession and depression, every spiritual oppression, we come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and we command to every unclean spirit to pack up and go. For when the name of Jesus Christ is exalted above all, Things which are not of him are demoted. Addiction, you are demoted in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we bless your name. That you do so even now. That you do so even now. That you do so even now, Lord God. That you really sing, God, your children from the grape of Pharaoh, from the grape of Satan, from the grape of the demons in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For the days are due and over for what the enemy has been doing in the life of your children. So today, Lord God, we lift up your scepter. We lift up your scepter. And we say, Lord God, in your name, Lord Jesus, we command to every unclean, every impure, every deceitful spirit to back up and go. And then we command you to go in the pit where you belong. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
every strong man we bind you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every root of the enemy from birth from conception we cast you out in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and we proclaim the day of deliverance the day of grace of god the day that the lord has made that the power of god be displayed among the children of god for they will lift up your name do as you will do as you will even now Every every spirit of fast modi, every spirit of Jezebel, every spirit of Delilah, Hashik Habanta, Baba Cherebe can Tabayanta. We command you back up and leave the lives of the children of God now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For you no longer have power over the bodies, over the mind, over the hearts of those that God has set free. You cannot curse those that God has blessed. You cannot curse. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bless you, Lord, for what you do right now. Let your spirit flow. Let your spirit move. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word of the Lord today is uh, set the captives free. Set the captives free. The word of God says that there was a woman who was bound by Satan. Being a daughter of Abraham. For many years. And as she was bound by Satan, the Bible says that uh, she was sitting in the synagogue. And the Pharisee and the Sadducee. They were also sitting in the same place, but they did not agree for her to be set free. The reason why they did not agree for them, for her to be set free, is no other word. When the Lord came unto her and then said, Daughter of Abraham, hallelujah, they started complaining. Whatever God decides to set free shall be free. And the word of God says, if the son sets you free, indeed, you shall be free. You see, a man of God cannot set you free. He's just a man of God. Hallelujah. But the power that God has bestowed upon the person that he has chosen is, is that power that flows through the person to set free somebody. You see, the light cannot turn on itself. He needs to receive a power from somewhere. And you got a switch. So the man of God is like a switch. By itself, by himself, he can do nothing. But when God connects to that switch, the power and the electricity that is needed to turn on the light, darkness flees away. That's the reason why the Lord told unto his disciples, I have given you power and authority over all demons and clean spirit to cast them out, to chase them out, and to tell them that I say, you have no other power, no other room in the life of children of God. He said, go and cast out demons. 
Why? Because demons, they are operating in the deceit spirit realm. Their work is to blend and to act like nothing is happening. You see, there was a man who was possessed by a demon. And he was in the synagogue every time, in the temple. And when the Lord Jesus Christ stepped in the temple, that man who was possessed by the demon started manifesting. And the Bible said that the demon inside said, what do we have to do with you, Jesus Christ? At that very moment, the evil spirit saw that the light has come because it was hiding in the darkness. But the word of God said there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that is hidden that won't be unveiled. Hallelujah. So when the enemy goes and hides and seeks who he may devour, God says, I go after my lost sheep. And I also seek my lost sheep to redeem which that was lost. Today we have the word of God that is a certain word of God. Some preachers, some apostles, some people don't even no longer believe in the power of deliverance. They say no, those things are of holds. Nowhere in the word of God it is written, these are of holds. Hallelujah. They are not of holds. Actually, they are part of the New Testament, so it is new. When the Lord Jesus Christ stepped in, he stepped in to reassure us that his intent is to set the captives free. So by setting the captive free, by assuring us that his intent is so and so, he operated in that dimension. And he continually cast out demons wherever he went. The word of God says he delivered and cast out demons out of people wherever he went. He entered in the synagogues, in the temples, in the cities, in the towns, in the villages. And demons were hiding, but they were hiding at plain sight because he sees them. And because he sees them, he called them out. There was a man of Gadagara, right? Gada, Gadara. <laughs> Gadnara. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word of God said that he was possessed by a legion of demons. And you see, legion is anything between six to 12,000, according to the numbers of the Romans. Now, he was not possessed by one legion, but by legions. So in one person, you had at least 24,000 demons. Are, are you realizing that? In only one person, when I say at least, is the very low number. It could be 144,000, I don't know. But at least. In one person, they were packed like Bois de Sardine. Bois de Sardine is uh, in French. Okay? You see the uh, um, sardines, uh, cans, cans of sardines. The word of God said that when them demons were inside the life of the person, they were manifesting to the point that they were breaking chains that were bound unto him. And they were leading that man in the place of desert or the place of uh, the tombs. And for many times, that man has been bound out of his mind, violent, and unable to control himself. When you see people around who cannot control themselves, that's normal. Why? It's normal in the sense where they are controlled by the demon. It's abnormal for them, 
by normal for the demon because they are possessed and controlled by the demons. So their desire cannot be set free. The emotion cannot be set free because the one inside is not their will, is the demon controlling their will. Have you ever seen the puppets? You have the puppets and then you have a man with a, yeah, controlling, and then you can see them around, moving around. Whether the man move it right or left, it goes according to how he controls it. You see the church in America specifically, although it's everywhere, but the church specifically in America has been taught to simply negotiate with demons. Why do I say that? In America, they don't even first believe that demonic reality is true. And if they ever believe, they say, don't talk about it so that we don't bother you. One wrong and one wrong makes what? <laughs> A mess. And then preachers who converted as journalists. Preachers who converted as new anchors are the ones spreading the word around saying, no, it is of hold. It does not exist anymore. Preachers nowadays can see a demon and say, hi, buddy, how are you doing? Because they cannot recognize it. But the word of God called us for such a time like this. In a time when people are sitting at the same table with Jezebel. In a time when people are sitting in the same table with Ahab. In a time when people are sitting in the same table with Asmodee. The word of God called us to identify and to say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that I serve. Pack up and leave that person. You see, when you know that you have been given the power and the authority by the one you serve, you stand wall talk with certainty and certainty. You do not go around saying, Lord, will you please, if it be that will, cast out the demon. No, 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 no. When it comes to demon, it's not if, if that. <laughs> when it comes to demon, it is not if it be that will. When it comes to demon, it is always his will to get them out. Some of them can be robust, like uh, the demon that was in the child life. The word of God said that uh, it took him left and right, putting him in the fire and throwing him sometime in the water, attempting to burn him, attempting to drown him. But that glorious demon also had to go. And the Lord Jesus did not refrain for delivering that courageous demon, that strong demon. He didn't refrain even though the disciple failed because of lack and fasting and prayer in their life. But the Lord did not refrain from delivering that child. He willingly said, bring him to me. Why it is important for the children of God to be delivered. Let's go in the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, we're going to read from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, starting from Luke 
Luke chapter 4, starting from verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again. And he closed the book that he just read. He closed the word of the Lord that he just read. He closed the prophecy of God that he just read. And then? And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue mm. were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day, Tomorrow, this day, next week, this day, three months later, this day, a year by down, this day, this day, is this scripture for is which scripture? This scripture. That scripture. This scripture. The other scripture. This scripture. This scripture. Fulfilled in your ears. This scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Thank you. Amen. I always say that the word of God is the word of God that is constant, current, and up to date. See, when you have a computer, you have sometimes a system, as, uh, we, we call it ex exploitation system or operating system, they bring you some updates. Sometimes they bring updates because they discovered breaches or vulnerabilities. So what they do, they identify it and they realize that there are hackers who are able to penetrate those vulnerabilities. So they identify it and they send what they call security patch. Are we putting it in the same way in, in spiritual matter? We are the computers. And the hackers are the demon around. So sometimes when you sin, there is a breach. Are you following? When you're born in a cursed family, there is a breach. When you do something that is anti-God, there is a breach. So it becomes a vulnerability. And the hackers, their identity is to identify what bridge, what door you have opened. When we say bridge, it's not whole. It's just enough to penetrate. So they're looking for bridge in people's life. This person was born out of a wedlock, breach. This person was born into prostitution, breach. This person was born, so they're sort of looking and identifying breach. And then when they realize that some of the breach are already patched by the security of the word of God. It looks, it says, this person over there was born out of wedlock. That's curse. That's a breach. But the person already came to the Lord Jesus. And the person already dedicated himself or herself to the Lord Jesus. So that breach is therefore patched by the word of God. But he said, what is now the other breach in the life of the person? The person has this, this, and this. But as long as you know the word of God is alive, it becomes your update security breach and uh, security patch. As long as you know that the word of God is alive, it means it updates itself to patch the breach in your life. When yesterday you did something where you opened the door to a demon, the word of God is still updating itself to patch that breach. 
Now, the word of God goes further than just patching the bridge. He closed all bridges. Because when you are under the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and then you let that blood flow on you, through you, and in you, and then you remain under the Spirit of God, the Word of God, there is no more calm the nation. So there is no more bridge for the devil to find. Because anytime he tries to do something and penetrate somewhere, he finds right there the cross and the blood of the Lord. But you will need first to be delivered from that spirit unclean that was already penetrated inside. You see, those who were sitting in the synagogue and they did not have any manifestation was because the synagogue and the demon were partner. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when the Spirit of God says, I'm deciding today that this word is fulfilled. He said, oh, Jesus, I, I, are you following what I'm saying? When the word of God said today, it, it means tomorrow. It means today. The, God is the one who created the day. So he knows when it is the day and when it is the night. So when he said today, he is not meaning a, 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 a span of days. No. When he said today, <laughs> he means the day at the moment he's talking. And since the word of God is updating itself because it is alive. So when you hear today, it means today. So he says this day. Now, today is what? Sunday what? February 6th, 2022. So Jesus is talking to you and I. He said, this Sunday, February 6, 2022. You see, in a computer world, we do what we call variables or parameters, which is something that you put inside a quote of a letter or of a, a, a writings, but that thing will automatically update itself based on the circumstances around. So let's say, for example, you want to do automatic update of a date, for example. So you have parameters or variables that you put in bracket and you put Y. When you put Y, that Y means year. If you put comma M, it means month. If you put comma D, it means day. So when you put Y, if it is Y capital, like uppercase, it means the full four numbers of the year. If you put lowercase, it means the two last number of the year. So it is very well put together. So when those parameters are put together, what you do is that you can write a text and you say, today is, and you put in bracket Y. And when a computer generates itself to deliver a page to somebody, the computer will automatically take this variable of the Y, which is a parameter to determine which date is today. So automatically you have 2022. Are you following what I'm saying? Same thing when you use Microsoft Word, you have the same ability. In Microsoft Word, they have something already where you also can put current time. So what I'm saying is that the Lord wrote the word of God and when he said this day, he put also a parameter over there to say whichever day that we fall on when you are reading the word of God. Are you following what I'm saying? So he purposely left a parameter, a variable inside because he knows that this varies. So he knows that here will vary. So if he said this winter... You would have to say, ah, oh, because it's winter, uh, it's uh, summer, or it's the, uh, uh, I follow what I'm saying. But he said this day. And then he left open the parentheses and said, 
put any variable inside concerning your situation and apply it as a security patch to any breach that you may have opened, whether by mistake, whether by curse, whether by willingness. Because the blood of Jesus can help you and the name of Jesus Christ can help you to be sanctified and set free. So he said, this day, the Lord has anointed me to set the captive free. To preach, to declare deliverance to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty them that are bruised. You know, being bruised, you know what I mean, right? Being bruised. If somebody, for example, hits you, you will have a bruised. You know what I'm saying? So when the enemy, the devil, and the demons are oppressing you and hitting you, though they don't penetrate your life, they leave bruises around you. You follow what I'm saying? Even this one, the Lord Jesus said he takes care of it too. Hallelujah. He, he will do like the Hebrew boys. The three Hebrew boys. The fire will not even remain upon their cloth, neither the fire nor the smell of the fire. The Lord is willing. It is not if you be willing, no. It is I am willing. So when you are speaking to somebody in the name of Jesus, because the Lord is willing, because... There is a condition sine qua non that breaks into a result of the effect of what the word of God says by realizing in the person the result at the time the person heareth the word. Are you following what I'm saying? It says this. It said this day is this scripture fulfilled. Don't deal. In your ears. Verse 22, he says, And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious word which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? That's the problem. The word came. And the word was preaching the word. And when the word was preaching the word, the people start talking a word to confirm whether the word that they heard from the word was the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is this not Joseph Israel? Is this not, is this not? But the power of God is, is, it is irrespective of people. The power of God is irrespective of people. When you look at a book of, when you look at the book of Matthew chapter 7, the prophet who came at the last days, even though Jesus did not know them, they still cast out demons in his name. Because when God wants to do the work to deliver people, it is not if it be thy will. When he came down on earth, died on the cross, it was not if it be thy will, because he already did it. 
When God says, I have taken your curses, for he was cursed for us. How difficult can this be to believe? But you will see some people, it is not Joseph's son. What God is saying is that after I have decreed and declared over you deliverance, you are free to get out. But if you start now disputing or commenting on why you deliver just like the children of Israel, a decree came from God. Today, I will deliver you. Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And then when he went to tell to the people, they said, but what is the name of the God who talked to you? <laughs> you are under bondage. The enemy is oppressing your life. And God rises from his heaven and he said, I need to set free my children. The word of God says that he heard the complaint and the murmur and the suffering of the children of Israel that rose up to his nostril. And he said, I need to remember, I need to remember my promise to Abraham. So regardless of their state, they did not even believe in him. Were they believing on him? The guy, the guy, it was the, 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 the mad of Gandhara. Was he believing in Jesus? <laughs> the Lord does not deliver or does not send free people who are believing in him. It's, it's not a requirement. The requirement is not to believe in him. Because you possess. How do you believe in him? <laughs> How do you believe in him? But how much more if you come to him? When you don't come to him, he can deliver you. How much more when you come to him? Are you for what I'm saying? God can deliver those who don't even know him. Are you for what I'm saying? Not can. God will want to deliver even those who don't know him. He told to the Moses, to Moses, go set my people free. But they did not know him. They had no clue who he was. They've been for more 400 years into the land of uh, Egypt. They have been blended uh, with uh, all kind of uh, 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 idols. Just like in the United States. It is more than 230 or 250 years today of independence. The people now have been blended with all kind of cultural disease. Churches have been blended with all kind of cultural disease. Spiritual diabetes. But still God says, I want to set my people free. Why? Because the word of God already said this day. He already spoke the same way he gave the promise to Abraham. That promise 400 years after. Hallelujah. The promise did not die along the way. The promise did not tarry along the way. So when he called the disciple, he called you and I, he said, I give you power and authority over all unclean spirit. Let's take the book of Luke, chapter 9. Let's read from verse 1. Ay, 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 ay. 
Luke chapter 1, starting mm. from verse 1. Luke 9, Luke verse 9, 1. Uh -huh, starting from verse 1. Mm. Then he called his 12 disciples together. So wh when then? After he'd been talking like I'm talking right now. When then? After he spoke the word in Luke chapter 4. After he said, I have come to deliver. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a then. Then he called his 12 disciples. He didn't say 11. Amen. Because even Judah who had his, <laughs> even Judah who was a thief, received also power. <laughs> oh my God. Continue. Then he called his 12 disciples mm. together and gave them power oh. and authority. Oh, Lord Jesus. Over all devils. Oh, over some devils. All oh, devils. Over those who are in the United States. All devils. No, I think those who are in China, the Koreas. All devils. No, they, they know Kung Fu. <laughs> All devils. I mean, the one in China, they know Kung Fu. <laughs> All devils. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Remember the word of God in the book of Acts? When the seventh son of Sceva, they went to cast out demons. But they did not have the principle and the understanding of what they were doing. The word of God said that that demon was from China. <laughs> okay, the word of God did not say it was from China. But that demon had all kind of a karate and then kung fu on the life of the seven of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible said he built them up so much that he even got them naked. If you ever watch a movie like me when I was a young, 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 a young little boy, I enjoy watching Shaolin. Because in Shaolin, the guy can be here and be like, and you hear, <laughs> hallelujah. And then he can take the cloth of somebody at distance. And suddenly you see him fly. You don't know where he's going by flying. Hallelujah. When you see a Shaolin passing by, suddenly you hear. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Hallelujah. And every time he has to do something, He knew how to speak in tongues. <laughs> Amen. To let you know that when God is taking over your palabra, when he's taking over your problem, when he's taking over that demon that is causing you to be lost, to be mad, the people can be around and they can see you in the tomb. Like that man of Ganara. When the Lord passes by, He said, "This day, continue." Verse nine, uh, chapter nine, verse one. Verse one. Then He called His twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And He sent them to, to cure some diseases. To cure, to cure all diseases. Okay. Over here, the word of God actually did not deal right okay. because over here it says. To cure all diseases except coronavirus. To cure diseases. <laughs> the word of God said that in a time of coronavirus, make sure that uh, you are six feet away. Cure diseases. A are you following what I'm saying? Amen. You know why the word of God speaks this way? Because the word of God already know ahead of time what will happen. So he knew it would be diseases of all kinds. So he made sure to not name them name by name because he knew if he did say the lepros, then they would say, ah, but this is not leprosy, this is the coronavirus. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? 
So he put them in the category of if it is called disease, then it is curable. To cast out demons and to cure diseases. Some of the reasons why diseases are put after casting demons is because some diseases root are demonic. Until you cast out the demon out of the life of the person, that disease will remain forever. There is no MRI that will detect that disease. There is nothing such in medicine that can look and see which type of demon you have. They will never accomplish it anyway. The only one who is able to know the lady who was having a humbug with CNN, they call it disease. But they also saw inside a demon. Hallelujah. She was bound by Satan. So many diseases will never be cured until the root that caused that spill of that disease is dealt with. You see, demons who cause disease, they are like a vomiting inside the life of the person. And any spill out that they do within the spirit and the soul and the, the, the person within the person cause physical reaction. That become disease. So if you don't remove that vomiter. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you don't remove that spewer. And then you only clean the, the, the vomit. It will happen again and again and again and again. But the problem is that some people, when God says, this day in your ear, it is fulfilled. They say, but my, my, my disease is not demonic. Well, that's your disease actually. To refuse to be delivered. And to not recognize that after all, you have been so long for so long on the same thing for so long. God says this is demonic. He's either through the curse of your forefathers, the curse of your parents, and your own curse of your own sin. So when the demon is inside, he needs to go. Because the root of that disease is not the atmosphere. The root of that disease has nothing to do with uh, no, it is a uh, season. No, it's not a season. There is no season disease. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a demons going around and spewing stuff so they can choose a season. But this does not mean that God has made season for disease. Are you following what I'm saying? Can somebody tell me that God has made certain season for certain disease? But the one that works that way is the enemy. Who cause diseases and then want people to accept that disease. By saying, if it be the will of God, I will be set free. No. Are you following what I'm saying? That's why God said, okay, to make it simple, I gave you power. I gave you authority over all devil. The devil of the winter, the devil of the summer, the devil of the whatever. I gave you power over all of them to cast them out and to cure. 
diseases, all of them. Continue. Verse 2. Verse 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house he enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when he go out in that of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they and they departed and went through the town, the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Every somewhere. Healing somewhere. Everywhere. Have you read have, have you noticed that at that time they did not have the Holy Spirit? They have no Holy Spirit zero at all. Like the way today we have the indwelling Holy Spirit, they didn't have none of it. How do we know it? Because we see it. And how do we know it? Because in the Old Testament, some of them also heal disease. Elijah. Elijah. Hallelujah. So in another word, the, the deliverance aspect, it is so much the will of God that even when they are in slavery against their will, he still comes down to deliver them. Is that clear? Because it's will is for somebody to be delivered and be sound enough to make a decision whether he wants to follow him or not. The man who was mad, when the Lord delivered him, now he had a sound mind to make a decision. Oh, praise the Lord. Whether he wants now to follow the Lord or not. Because if you are possessed until you die, you go in heaven at the door and you say, oh Lord, but it was not my fault. Oh. <laughs> I was possessed. But the Lord will not excuse no fault. So he will say, I delivered you. You had your sound mind. Now, after you delivered and you refuse that sound mind, then you become mad. <laughs> Where? Because the Bible said the devil was does what? Goes what? Seek for seven others, demon, and they what? Come back. And the word of God said that uh, when they come back, the state of the person is what? Is worse than where he left. But God, we always give the opportunity to somebody to be set free from demonic possession and oppression. Now, it is the will or the choice of the person to say, okay, I want to go back. Just like the children of Israel. He gave them the opportunity to be set free. By power and by might. Including with his spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because sometimes the word of God says it is not by, by might, it is not power by my spirit. But by that day it was by power and might. They were delivered by fire. And then they were given back the opportunity. Some of them said, we go further. Some of them said, no, we want to die in the wilderness. Some of them said, we want to go back in the possession. Hallelujah. For God is not willing that no soul will perish. The disciple in the book of Luke, chapter uh, John chapter 6, the 70, he gave them the opportunity to follow him. And then they decided to walk with him no more. So to say that when it comes to deliverance, it is not if it is the will of God. So much so God is willing to deliver and set the captive free. That he will use anybody available. Uh, you follow what I'm saying? Remember, in the book of Matthew chapter 7, the Bible makes it clear. 
that they did cast out demons. Let, let's go read it. Matthew chapter 7. From verse 20. Matthew 7. Let's read from verse 20. Matthew chapter 7 from mm. verse 20. When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist had sent us unto thee. Saying, no, no. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. Verse 20. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the, by the fruit you shall know them. Matthew 7. Yeah, Matthew 7, mm -hmm. verse, verse 20. Okay. When the men. No, no, no. Okay, read, read on, on the screen over there. Matthew 7. Oh, Matthew. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew 7, 7. 20. Uh -huh. Wherefore, by their fruit he shall know them. Mm -hmm. Not everyone. That said unto me, Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But he that doeth the will of my Father, mm -hmm. which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Many will say to me in that day, mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Mm -hmm. And in thy name have cast out devils? Uh -huh. And in thy name done many wondrous works? Mm -hmm. and Wonderful then, works. Mm -hmm. And then will I profess unto them, mm -hmm. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Depart from me, he that work iniquity. Is that clear for you or you want me to break it down? The word of God over here, make it clear. That they did cast out demons in his name. When the Lord said, I never knew you, it's because the person did not have the spirit of the Lord in him. So he was not in that relationship with Christ, though he has the power in the name of the Lord. That's why people can still cast out demons, and at the end of the day, they don't make in heaven. Because the name of Jesus is the power in which you believe to operate what he has already set. So it says there were people who came unto him and they said, in your name, we did what? Professor, in your name, we did what? Cast out devils. They did not say we were trying to cast out devils. Get in the context. So they achieved the casting out of demons. My point is, even those that the Lord said, I did not know you. I, I did not know you. I did not know you. I never knew you. They can cast out demons. How much more those who know him? And he knows. Are, are, you, are you getting something? He so much so wants to get rid of Of those demons in the life of the people that he allows his name to be used even by those he does not know. Do you see it? Because the prerequisite to cast out demons is not that he knows you. Is it? The Bible is clear. Even Balaam was able to speak curse and blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when the church tells you that casting out demon is not of nowadays, get it right because before the Holy Spirit, they had power. After the Holy Spirit, like those people, they had power. So casting out demons is for then and for now. Are you following? And it is for much more for those to whom the Lord has directly given authority and power to do that work. That's why we do not negotiate with demons. Somebody would not go and say, in the name of Jesus, will you go? 
No. When the Lord was casting out demons, he was not negotiating with them. Get out. The only one who had the nerves to ask him if they can go somewhere in the what? In the peaks? They have some nerve because some demons have some nerves. He said, whether you go in the pig, whether you go in the pit, whether you go in the sea, pack up, go. Demons have no other choice but to obey the one who carries the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the one who don't know who, what they talk about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like the seven son of Skiba. Hallelujah. They are bound to obey the authority in that name. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just put yourself in condition where you see somebody casting out demons whom the Lord does not know, but still cast out demons. If you get that right, you will understand which power you have, whom the Lord knows. Hallelujah. So today, he said, I have come to set the captives free. There may be some. Ha, there are some. There you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are some like the word of God says. That we say, but isn't there over there Joseph's son? That we want to dispute the power that God is doing and displaying. God desires you to be free. So you're going to be free. God desires you to be at liberty. So you're going to be at liberty. Those who sit around and now we say, but was not this so, so, and so? You must know. That they will not stop what God himself has decided to do in your life. When he says to any unclean spirit, pack up and go, that spirit packs up and leave. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this day, in the name of Jesus Christ, every root of demonic possession, every root of demonic disease, every root of them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you, back up and leave. Get out of the life of anyone under the sound of this voice this day, you demons, you devils, back up and leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Gather your disease and leave. Gather your impurities and leave. Gather your insecurities and leave. Gather your depression and leave. Gather your addiction and leave. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We bind you out of the life of the children of God. Now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And come no more. We command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. See. Those children of God that you have bound for so long. Today, 
today, today, today, even now. Even now, I commend you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out. You demons, gather your confusion and get out. You demons, gather your impurity and your infirmities and get out. You demons, gather your barrenness and get out. You demons, gather every limb and get out. You demons, gather every cancer and get out in the name of Jesus Christ. I send you back to the pit where you belong. And then you have no longer power. No longer power over the body of those that the Lord has decided to set free. For indeed he said, whoever that the son, whoever that the son sets free, is free indeed. Today is the proclamable day of the Lord. The day of grace and deliverance. Set the captives free. To set the captives free. To preach deliverance. To set at liberty anyone that was bruised by the attack and the oppression of the enemy. Lord, we send back to everyone, every spirit, every unclean spirit. We send back, we send back, we send back every spill, every vomit that they have released in the life of your children. Now, in the name of Jesus, pack up and go! The pathway that you have used to trouble the life of the children of God, I close it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I bless your name for what you do right now. And for how you operate right now. Demon of shame, back up and go! In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You've been hiding. You've been hiding in the life of the children of God. Today, you exposed. So I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Pack up and leave. And no more. For this body is now under the blood. Lord, I sprinkle your blood of coverage, your blood of deliverance, your blood of sanctification upon each soul, upon each person right now under the sound of this voice, by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, let them be set free and remain free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Amen.